Welcome to Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now you can learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property. Learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau with the Mineola Law Firm of Shane Doxtanisi and Corker. He's a member of the Committee on Professional Ethics of the Bar Association of Nassau County and counsel to the Nassau Academy of Law. And now, here is your host for Law You Should Know, attorney Kenneth J. Landau. Hi, this is Ken Landau, and welcome to Law You Should Know. Today we're talking with Lauren stiller Ricklin, and she is the founder and president of Ricklin Institute for Strategic Leadership. And today she's going to be discussing tips for lawyers and other people on working with other generations and genders. And Lauren is the author of several different books. She's a lawyer herself. And one of the recent books is Ladder Down, Success Strategies for Lawyers from Women Who Will Be Hiring, Reviewing, and Promoting You. She's also a, a speaker and author and, and gives leadership training to many different firms. Lauren, welcome to Law You Should Know. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. To start out, why is it important for lawyers and others to learn how to work with different generations and genders? Well, first of all, we now know from a lot of research that has been done that diverse workplaces are more profitable. And there is good data that shows that. Um, So it's past the point of being the right thing to do. It is also the right thing to do and economically uh, more viable to care about diversity and inclusion. And the, the generational lens, I think, is also important because we are really at a very unique moment in our workplaces in which we still have two very large generations who are present, the baby boomers and millennials. And in between that, we have the much smaller generation, but certainly a generation coming of age for themselves in terms of leadership roles and their next level of career growth and development, and that's Gen X. So we, and and we are living at a time when our society is more diverse than ever before by any measure. So it's really uh, 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 an important moment in trying to figure out how we can take the rich diversity of the world that we live in and use it in an appropriate and positive way to make our organization stronger and healthier and more dynamic. And there may be a few people out there in terms of working in law firms or um, uh, even clients who predate the boomers. Well, yeah, but but at, that, at this point, yes, that is true to a, to a very small extent. I mean, I I think when we talk, I mean, up until a number of years ago, we people would like to say there were four and five generations in the workplace today. But but right now, in terms of number significant numbers, um, uh, there are three, and it's always wonderful when those workplaces have vibrant, energetic people still, you know, in their you know mid to late seventies and eighties who are. Are, um, working, but th- but statistically, that's just much smaller than it's ever been, of course. And what um, are there some? Is there potential for conflict or a clash between some of those di- different generations in the in an office or even in a law office? So what I'm finding uh, in the work that I have been doing in terms of consulting and training and 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 speaking on this topic is that generational divides are very top of mind right now. And I think that's because the youngest generation, the millennials, have really poured into the workplace in very large numbers over the last several years. So you're starting to see real impacts of what this generation may look like and how it's impacting the workplace in a in a very different way. And um, so so it, it there are differences. I and and I think that sometimes um, 
older generations may be prone to say, well, you know, they're going to look just like us pretty soon, so we can just wait out the whatever these differences are. And um, But I don't think the data supports that. I think there are enough significant differences to suggest that millennials may have a very significant long-term impact on the workplace and that it is really important to understand that generation and where they're coming from, just as it's important for millennials to understand the generations already in the workplace and how best to, to create effective teams. And, and what accounts for some of those differences? Well, so from the baby boomer perspective, you have a generation, which is it's kind of interesting. I mean, when you go back, and I wrote, um, you raised us, now work with us, uh, looking at the generations in the workplace and focusing on strengthening multi-generational teams. And when I was researching the book, I was struck by, you know, early patterns that impact some of what we see. And what's interesting about baby boomers, um, you know, basically born between 1948 and 1964, um, is that you have a generation whose roots are very much in idealism and activism, uh, you know, the civil rights movement, the women's rights movement, the assassinations that were taking place when they grew up, the aftermath from that um, is very um, uh, significant moments in popular culture and what was happening in the world. And yet for younger generations in the workplace, they see a generation that's very materialistic and that can perpetuates a culture that doesn't make sense to them at work. Gen X, who came after the baby boomers, so born 1965 to you know, 1978, 80, 80, early 80s, but depending on whose research you're reading, um, is a much smaller generation. So they did not really have an opportunity to have a significant footprint of their own. They kind of assimilated, and that's partly because their size was so much smaller. They, as a generation, grew up at a, a time of significant upheaval taking place in, um, the, in with respect to recessions that were happening. Um, they, are, they experienced the highest divorce rate in history among their parents. Uh, very unique, uh, interesting uh, things happening in the world that, that when people talk about defining characteristics of the generation, there's often the, the word sin Criticism is used, um, you know, having a kind of a little bit of a jaundiced eye, even as they have assimilated as a generation into the workplace. Um, and I will add, and I should have added right at the very beginning of this conversation, it is so important when we have generational conversations to understand that we're p- talking about patterns and t- trends in research, not uh, you know, a cohort of millions and millions and millions of people, because even, you know, Gen X, which is a smaller generation, is, you know, mid, you know, 40 plus million, 46 million or so in this country, and um, the boomers are 80 plus um, as, as our millennials. So it's really important to always understand that we're talking about trends in research for a particular cohort, not trying to ascribe characteristics to all these millions of people people but understanding that that's what we're looking at you see a gener- you know these two different generations of the, you know the more senior generations in the workplace um, you know which have kind of conform to a particular workplace culture that has been stuck for a very long time. And then you have millennials entering the workplace in these very large numbers. They're going to be half of the global workforce by 2020, which is not that far off. Um, And they're the the generation born between around 1980-ish and 2000. And there are signs in the in the research that indicates that they can prove to be a transformative generation in in many positive ways for the workplace with respect to how they view work life integration how they will lead as a generation with respect to qualities of transparency and openness um, and of course they are uh, use of technology as a tool to create greater flexibility. Uh, there are all, there's all kinds of interesting research that's been taking place that suggests that this generation 
uh, will not turn into another baby boomer, Gen X generation in the workplace, that they have the potential to have a very defined mark. Are there, you know, differences between the millennial and the uh, Gen X in terms of learning style? You seem to say there's a difference in the, the workplace work-life balance issue, but is there also a difference, and I'd like to go back to that in a moment, but is there also a difference in uh, communication styles or use of social media? Um, I would say that the biggest difference, I think, with respect to millennials is this incredible um, it's it's not just a comfort with technology. It is growing up in a um, a, a life on law, uh, in a life online, and and this is where, interestingly enough, I think there are serious implications for the legal profession. Um, I, I hear stories all the time when I'm doing training or speaking um, uh, from more senior lawyers who are concerned about what they view as preaches, uh, breaches of um, how they would describe as very obvious confidentiality and privacy norms uh, by virtue of what people might be posting on Facebook or Instagram or whatever their social media preference might be. And when I ask the question about what type of training or background or orientation is given around some of these issues, I'm looked at like I have three heads, as, and people will say, well, why, how, how would it be necessary? Why would it be necessary to have to explain to somebody that we live in a profession where you live and die by privacy and confidentiality? And my answer is, because their world frame, their frame is entirely different. They have grown up where notions of privacy and confidentiality are worlds apart from what we know and take for granted. So we can't take for granted that they bring the same value and perspective that we have. And we have to think differently, perhaps, about training and orientation on those topics. You know, uh, the idea that somebody might have a great victory at work uh, in a negotiation and then go home and post to it on Facebook could feel like second nature to somebody um, that would leave the more senior person in the workplace horrified at that transgression. So there are those kinds of differences uh, with respect to how we live our lives online that have an impact directly in the workplace and I think the legal workplace in particular. Okay, we're going to take a short break now. When we come back, I'd like to pick up on that issue. We're talking with Laura Stiller Ricklein, and she is the founder and president of Ricklein Institute for Strategic Leadership, and we're talking about working with other generations and genders. You're listening to Law You Should Know here on WHPC, the voice of Nass Community College in Garden City, New York, and also of the internet at ncc.edu slash WHPC. We'll be back in a moment. This portion of programming on WHPC is brought to you on behalf of the Nassau County Bar Association, who wants you to know about ADR, Alternate Dispute Resolution, which can help you avoid costly, lengthy, and uncertain litigation in court. By resolving disputes through mediation or arbitration, it gives you control over who decides your case. A mediator helps all parties to reach an agreement they can live with, or an arbitrator selected by the parties hears and decides the case. Your attorney can still represent you, but you control who decides your case. ADR is fast and less stressful than fighting in court, and it is a great way to resolve divorce, employment, or commercial disputes. ADR is now offered through the Nassau County Bar Association. Find out more about how ADR can help resolve your dispute by calling 516-747-4070 or visit nassaubar.org. Once again, we continue with Law You Should Know. From the Mineola Law Firm of Shane, Dox, Denise, Corker, and Sauer, here is attorney Kenneth J. Landau. Hi, welcome back to Law You Should Know. And this is Ken Landau, and you're listening to Lauren Stiller Ricklein, and she's the founder and president of Ricklein Institute for Strategic Leadership. And she's been talking to us about working with other generations and genders. She's written several books on this area and does a lot of training and, and also scholarly research. Lauren, you mentioned about uh, how a younger person and maybe someone who's 
in uh, a millennial might post be quick to post things online about let's say work but even in their own life do, are they quick to post things and and put a, a lot more out there on the social media than let's say a millennial and certainly more than a, a boomer would do 